Hello, welcome back to Go and Walkabout. Today I'll show you how I use my Swift UE post list view in a UE Git application. And I'll explain why I use UE Git in this situation. A little bit of a recap from previous episode. Now I worked on my post list, what is a complicated list with images, pictures, interactions, and I have completed that. So you can see now I have interactions. So if you're not the owner of a post, other interactions, if you are the owner, uh, as we saw previously, we can zoom into pictures, etc., and that is all working fine. So now it has to become part of the application. And for that, I need to explain a few things. But let's first look at the existing application so that I can show you what is actually the case and why I need to do it a little bit different than just rewriting my trip view in Swift UE. So here we have the application and let's go into a trip. And if we go to the trip, we see a first cover page with an image and a map showing about that trip. And now if we start scrolling, you see it's a bit snappy. So it's a paste scroll, uh, a paged, a paged scrolling view. See, we can go back and we can go up and it goes like this. And as soon as I get into the list, it's post, it's normal scrolling behavior, but we are in the top, it stops a little bit, and then with the page, it goes back. So I wanted to mimic this kind of behavior also in Swift UI. Unfortunately, the Swift UI scroll view does not support this behavior. So I needed to think about something else. And that is the whole point. Now on the internet, I found a way to use a tab view, but I will show you that tab view isn't working for me. So let's go into that. This is the trip view and the trip view. If we look at it here, it has a tab view and the tab view has a header and content as two pages and then i do all the rotating stuff to make it a vertical pager etc and it kind of this the header this is the content that is my trip list that you saw before and this is the trip view and it looks promising because this is mimicking the header and i can scroll see we see it appearing and it seems to snap so now I have gone to the list and it seems to work all the way I would like to have it. But now I have no way to scroll it back. And I'm not the only one facing this issue. Others have the same thing. And for now, this is not working. So I needed to find an alternative. And instead, I'm still bridging it to UI Kit. So I actually use the traditional, the old view, the old trip view, and I start embedding the list into that view to work with that. So I still have a path forward and maybe in a future episode or a future release of Swift UE, uh, Apple will improve on this. But for now, this is my path forward and maybe I redesign the whole list that I don't need it anymore, but that's for a later stage. So let's go and have a look at that. Now, this is my original view controller. Let's scroll to the top. <laughs> That I, that I used. And you see quite a bit of commented code because it's still a work in progress to move on that, but this is where it's happening. So on my view load, I create my uh, view model for the post list view, yeah, and I pass the trip and the post, what are part of this view controller here. I have a trip and I have a set of posts. And I also create my post list. Yeah, I use the UE hosting controller around my post view and I get the view from that. So this way I now use my Swift UE view to embed it into a UE kit application. And this is my page view. The page view you can see here is a normal scroll view and that I have configured in the storyboard to have this paging behavior that you saw. And that actually has two sub views. It's the header view. That's still the old head of you that I always had, so no changes there. And it has my post list that I just created what is actually the Swift UE view as a sub view. And of course, I don't need to set uh, the delegate on the table view, what was before I used the post list here, so I had to remove some stuff. Now, then I fetch my trips. And this is the whole story. So I fetch the trips, I do all my work, fetch the post. It's still not that uh, important. I fetch the post and here I get to my update list. And the update list is where now the magic is happening because traditionally the update list would then go through the post and categorize them into sections per date, etc. But that stuff has been delegated now to the post list. Uh, so we need just to pass on the number of posts. And that's what's happening here. So I first need to retrieve my view model 
on the view model, I need to set the sort because I also have the sorting that I'll demo shortly. And then I need to refresh my view model to set the new trip and new set of posts. And this is, of course, a method that I implemented in my view model to do that. And this way I can still control and fetching the data in my original view controller. So no changes there. That's still the same behavior. But once I fetch the data, I pass it on to my Swift UE view. And this way the whole thing is working and I can still control it. Now, a little bit further down, as I showed you, I told you, I also have my, these flag options can disappear, etc. But here it's more important when I click the sort because I have an option in my view controller, in the header bar, to change it to sorting, so you can toggle that. I set the self to sort, it's not really relevant, but because that's the sorting in the view controller, but here's more important. Again, I need to get my uh, view model. There I need to sort, I need to toggle the sort on the view model, and okay, this is something I need to do to persist the sorting order for the user, but that's not relevant for it. And I'm probably going to change that as you see here. But this way I can just manipulate attributes on my view model and still make it work. So let's go and have a look and run this and see what is happening when we, we see this. Now we see the trip here. We can go into a trip. This is the old header that you always saw before with the, the header view and the map. And of course, I also will work on the Swift UE version for this. But for now, this is still the old one. I can scroll down. And now we see nicely here my whole Swift UE view the way it was. It zooms. Yeah, it works. I can take interaction, do interactions. Now let's not delete this, but let's, for instance, delete this one. And I'll delete it. Confirm. It's removed. So all the interactions, everything is working, and I've delegated that back to my Swift View review. And this way, it's really nice to use the Swift View review. And here's the sorting button. So if I press the sorting button, it will resort the list as it is. And now the million dollar question, because I did this because of the paging view, and now I can nicely scroll back and it snaps back into my header view in the same way, this way, no, not far enough, a little further scrolling. Yes, it will snap and it will continue working the way it is. So I had my post list view. I was happy with that. That's a nicely encapsulated Swift UE view. And now I have uh, replaced the old table view controller that was behind this post view and all that logic and storyboard logic removed and put it in place and it works nicely. And all I needed to do is here in my view controller, create an instance of my view model, create an instance of the post list as part of the view controller, set it to my page of view, and of course do some interactions through the view model uh, to work with that. Of course, it would be much nicer if I could do it all in Swift UE, because then I can even remove more of the UE kit. But for now, this works. I'm happy with it. And this is the path forward. So probably one of the next thing is also do the same thing here for my uh, header view. So make a Swift UE version of the header view. And then this view controller is actually nothing more than just that original scroll view with two pages in it to deal with the paging. And I can clean up a lot of stuff in this code to make, uh, to do that path forward. But for now, I have my post list view, what is done. It is nicely implemented in the application and it's working. And it's again, some, um, yeah, old UE kit code that I can remove and move forward with the Swift UE. I hope you like it. If you like it, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, subscribe anyway, because the next episode might be better for you. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.